And now I've shifted everything around on the desk and placed the camera so that it should look down where the telescope should roughly be. Let's have a look at that now. And now, let's put the telescope in place so we can look down the lens and see the image. As you can tell, it's not a perfect spectrum on the camera, but we are actually seeing it correctly. Here's the telescope, and if I zoom in... So finally I just need to focus this, which I'm going to do using the focusing knob on the other side of the telescope that I've already shown you, and the one on the collimator. So we just look through, adjust one until the lines are as sharp as they can be, then adjust the other, uh, and repeat this um, until we've got the sharpest possible lines we can see. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll insert a photo of the um, focus lines. Noise. And that's it set up. So the final thing uh, that I need to do is just check the um, pr prism is at the minimum deviation position. So basically, as I, um, I've got my prism kind of set up, and I'm going to rotate the table this way. And if I look through the eyepiece, even I pick a particular line, it'll appear to move like this as I rotate the prism. And the important thing is it kind of goes out and comes back, even though I'm only turning this in one direction. So what I want to do is find the point here, right before they start to come back, and that's the minimum deviation position. Um, I'll set it up like that now. So that's the spectrometer set up. The neon spectrum is the easiest to set it up with because neon has an awful lot of spectral lines, so it's easy to um, focus and make sure everything's sharp and detect everything. Um, but because it has so many lines, and uh, neon has I think more lines than uh, an actor starring in a film that they wrote, um, it makes it hard to take measurements. So to uh, do the measurements and um, to calibrate our spectrometer, we're going to use helium. So I'm going to take uh, this high-tech heat resistance device um, that I made myself, and I'm going to take the uh, neon tube out. They get quite hot, so we want to watch out for that. I'm going to lay it very carefully on the desk. Um, because I broke one of these making these videos and I'm going to put the helium tube in instead and of course it's cold so I didn't actually need to use the kitchen roll for that so let's turn this back on you can immediately see the difference in the spectrum I'm just going to put it back where it was the rest of the spectrometer I will not adjust so I did move the power supply out of the way uh, just to put the bulb in, but the rest of it should stay the same um, because it, it should be pretty set up. So let's have a look at the spectrum from this one. Perfecto! So I've got the helium uh, spectrum set up. One thing that you may have seen in some of the photos uh, that I've been putting through these videos is that there's a crosshairs on the um, telescope eyepiece. So what I'm going to do um, in this experiment now is put the crosshairs on each uh, line in the helium spectrum and I'm going to record the position of that line in the um, data table. So the idea, of course, is we know the wavelengths of the helium spectrum. So if I know the angles, which I'm going to measure off here, remember, uh, that they occur at, I've calibrated the spectrometer so that I can relate angle to wavelength. So the first part of this experiment is going to be taking those readings and constructing a graph um, that calibrates their spectrometer. And then the second part is going to be using it um, to measure the, the limits of human vision and to identify certain lines in the mercury spectrum. So, um, I don't think I'll be videoing much of the rest of this, so I'm just going to be uh, kind of adjusting this telescope to different positions and inserting photos of the um, angle. Uh, so basically, there's going to be a lot of shots of the vernier scale, and it's going to correspond to particular wavelengths um, in the helium spectrum. So you'll get a series of images now uh, that you can take readings off and then you should make your graph to calibrate the spectrometer.